let's uh, see how we can solve rational equations before. We've done some easy things like this, where we can isolate x. And when we're solving rational equations, that's in a sense what we need to do too. We need to find the value of x that makes the left side equal to the right side. There's two ways we can we can do this. One is graphically, and another way we can do it is algebraically. So in this example I've done here, I'm going to use this example to solve it using a graphing calculator. Now, one of the things I can do to this is I can take this equation, and you've solved lots of uh, equations using your graphing calculator before. By taking this term here and moving it to the left side, it would now be minus 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. And I'm trying to figure out where that equals 0. So I've set everything to the left-hand side. And I'm going to graph a function, y1 equals 5 over x minus 3 plus 2, minus 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. So I'm going to, I'm going to graph this function right here, the same one that I've generated here. I'm going to make a function out of it, y equals uh, this piece here. Just point out that what makes this a rational equation is that we have, in the equation, we have x's in the denominator. We have the variable in the denominator. So I've already entered this in my calculator, so I've got 5 divided by x minus 3 plus 2 minus, whoop, ah, oh dear, what happened? There we go. Minus 2x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. So I've entered that function in the calculator. And here I have the graph drawn. Now remember, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out where this function equals 0. So it looks like from the graph that there's only going to be one place right about here. So if I go to G solve, now where this function equals zeros are the roots. The roots are, are like the x-intercepts of this function, or the place where the y value equals 0, which is what I'm trying to see here. So I hit root, and um, I will get and answer x equals 0 0.5. And there are no others. If I go to the right, it's not finding any. And if I go to the left, it's not finding any. So as we move to the right forever and to the left forever, obviously the y-axis, sorry, the x-axis becomes our asymptote. The other way that we could do this one, of course, is we could say, let's make y1 equal to the left side and let's make y2 equal to the right side. So I could go back in here, and I could make y1 equal to the left side, so that's 5 divided by bracket x minus 3 plus 2. And I could make y2 equal to the right side, which is 2x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. And I can draw these two graphs, which will look look different from each other, from the one that we just did before. And now when I go to G-solve, I'm trying to find out where they're equal to each other. So I want to know where do the two graphs intersect. And you can see we're going to get the exact same x value here at x equals 0.5. Nothing to the right, nothing to the left. So that should be a skill you already have developed, is how to use your graphing calculator to solve equations. Um, and so by either setting the equation equal to 0 and find the roots, or doing the left side as one equation and the right side as the second equation, and find the intersection points. Find the intersection points. So that's, that's all there is to solving rational equations using a graphing calculator. Let's look at how we would solve rational equations algebraically. Here's a very simple rational 9 divided by x minus 2 equals 3. So the first thing I want to do is find out what are the non-permissible values. And of course, when we look at this one, we see x cannot equal 2. Because we'd be dividing by 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, and we can't do that. So that's just, we have to keep that in mind 
when we're solving the equation, because if our answer ends up being 2 at the end, we'll have to reject it, because that's a non-permissible value. So I'll write the equation again over here, so I can show my work. Now, when we're solving rational equations, what we want to do is we want to get rid of the fractions. It's never nice working with fractions when we're solving equations. So right now I have 9 divided by x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 2. And of course, the reason to do that is to get rid of the denominator. Those fractions will cancel out. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1. Now on the left side I have 9. On the right side, a little bit of multiplying out to do. So 3x minus 6. And now I can easily isolate x by adding 6 to both sides. And now dividing both sides by 3, I get x equals 5. And so this is where I would now want to check and make sure, am I OK? Yup. x equals 5 is what I've got. As long as x is not 2, this will be our solution. Let's look at this example here and solve this one algebraically. So I'm taking a look at my denominators and I can see that x cannot equal 2. Again, 2 minus 2 would be a problem. 2 minus 2 is a problem. Can't divide by 0. So my non-permissible value is 2. x cannot be 2. So now I'm going to solve this equation for x and to get rid of the fractions I need to multiply all the terms in here by x minus 2. So this will conveniently cancel out there and just leave x squared minus 2 times x minus 2 equals here. The x minus 2's cancel out again and I'd just be left with 3x minus 2. So this is a quadratic equation here. I am going to multiply this out in my next step. Negative 2x plus 4. Careful with the negative signs. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. And when we have a quadratic equation with x squared and x's in it, we need to set this equation equal to 0. So I'm going to minus 3x from both sides, and I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So minusing 3x gives minus 5x, and adding 2 gives 6. This is an easy quadratic equation to solve because I can factor it. Two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to minus 5 would be negative 3 and negative 2. So now I have x minus 3 times x minus 2 is 0. The only way you can multiply two things and get 0 is if one of these brackets is 0. So either x minus 3 is 0 or x minus 2 is 0. So then I get x equals 3 as this solution, and x equals 2 as this solution. So now I'm going to take my two answers and check them. Is this OK? No, it's not. x cannot equal 2. So I have to reject this solution, because it's one of my non-permissible values. But this one's OK. And so we will have one solution, x equals And in this final example here, we got 2x minus 1 equals 4x plus 3 divided by x minus 1. So our non-permissible values would be x equals 1. So x cannot equal 1, because 1 minus 1 would be 0, can't do that. So we'll make sure at the end that our answer is not 1. Next step, get rid of the fractions. So we'll multiply all the terms by x minus 1. On the left side, that's just going to cancel that out. Or sorry, on the right side, that's going to cancel that out. On the left side, we have 2x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 4x plus 3. So we will multiply all this stuff out. 2x squared minus 2x minus 1x plus 1. And collecting like terms here. And now again, we have a quadratic equation with x squares and x's, so we're going to set the equation equal to 0. I'll take away 4x. This would be minus 7x. And then I'll minus 3. That'll be minus 2. Now this is, so we've got 2x squared minus 7x minus 2 equals 0. This is not a nice one to factor. 
So I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula here. Remember, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we've got negative b, so negative negative 7 or positive 7, plus or minus the square root of 7, negative 7 squared, which is 49, minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. So 49 plus 16 is 65 divided by 4. So this doesn't work out very nice. The square root of 65 doesn't, doesn't simplify or doesn't come out to be a rational number. Certainly if you go 7 plus root 65 divided by 4 or 7 minus root 65 divided by 4, you're not going to get 1. So our two answers would be x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 65 divided by 4. And if you want, you could work those out to a decimal approximation, but leaving it as exact values is, is just fine. So, just reviewing how we would solve rational equations algebraically. First of all, find out what the non-permissible values are by looking at the denominators and seeing what x cannot be. Then we would multiply by whatever we need to to get rid of all the denominators in the expression solve the equation for x, like we've done here, and then don't forget to check your answer. That's solving rational equations.